If you enjoy watching Common Ground online, please consider making a tax-deductible donation at lptv.org. Lakeland Public Television presents Common Ground, brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Welcome to Common Ground. I'm your host, Scott Knudsen. In this two-segment episode, listen as singer-songwriter Amanda Grace plays music for children and people of all ages. Then visit a gallery in Brainerd where children exhibit their skills in the visual arts. I'm Kate Carlson and I'm in the Crossing Arts Alliance Gallery in Brainerd, Minnesota and we are featuring our Celebrate the Young at Art Children's Art Show, our annual show that we have. This is our 10th annual show that we hold each April. We accept artwork from all Brainerd area schools from kindergarten through high school and we like a variety of media, original artwork that the teachers select and each school is invited to choose 10 pieces of artwork and contribute to the show. We have different students every year and so every when they come to our little reception here they're always it's probably the first time they've come here because every year there are different students of course that are chosen to have their artwork displayed. Well the Crossing Arts Alliance that we have we want to make everyone aware of the arts available in our community is kind of an umbrella organization that we um, feature we have newsletters that show all of the different opportunities and I'm actually the coordinator of the youth program which we call Flipside and we like to showcase the artwork of children in many of the schools their their art their artwork the the arts have been cut in some ways because of budget so we our organization the Crossing Arts Alliance likes to give as many opportunities as we can for children to do their art and to show their art well, when we started the Flipside program, one of our areas was the art displays for children and available places to display children's artwork. That was just one of the one of the venues we pursued, and so that's why we started doing art shows. And we've had them in different locations, and now we are in this building, so it's a nice gallery setting that we enjoy. Do so you notice there's ten gold stars on the? Ten different pieces of artwork and those have been selected by our committee to be uh, matted and framed and then we hang them in the YMCA uh, for one year and then the child at the end of the year they get to take them home and we have a little plaque with their name and grade level on them so it's quite an honor for them to have, have a display in a very public place. Well that is my artwork. It's a Zentangle butterfly. It's supposed to have uh, cooler colors in the background and warmer colors on the butterfly, kind of. And it was where we were supposed to draw an animal, and then we had to put like designs and patterns into it. I've really enjoyed art. It's it's fun to me. It makes me pretty happy that my artwork was selected to be shown in public. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know it was really that good. I'm Lisa Jordan, the Artistic and Executive Director of the Crossing Arts Alliance in Brainerd. And we are here celebrating the Young at Art. This is our 10th year of putting on this exhibit. It's an exhibit of artwork from local school children and it is probably our most colorful show and certainly one of our most anticipated. We at The Crossing have an amazing group of volunteers 
many of the people who work on this particular exhibit and who love to work on this exhibit are retired educators themselves. So we have a whole committee with our nonprofit who gets together to hang the artwork, they communicate with the teachers, they make the wonderful hors d'oeuvres for our kids who come to the exhibit, and they're here tonight, most of them. The Crossing Arts Alliance works to bring all sorts of arts to the Brainerd Lakes area. That's our mission, to make arts accessible to our community and to make our community stronger through the arts. We do programming at the Crow Wing County Jail. We have children's programming, arts exhibits, concerts. Um, we run the full gamut. I think we get excited because this gives kids a chance to experience having their art in a formal gallery setting and we put on a, a formal opening which is a lot of fun. The kids get to come and show their work to their parents and their grandparents and really feel special about their involvement in the arts. We have quite a, a variety. We have mixed media, we have pencil and drawings and painting wonderful black and white self-portraits and we have some torn paper pieces, some paintings and some pixelation. It's really a nice mix. The art teachers who've worked with these children have really explored a number of different media. So that's really fun and interesting for us too. The selection process is left up to the teachers, actually, so the, the teachers go through, and I'm sure it's a very difficult job to choose just a few select pieces from their classes, but they bring us something that fits the theme that they're hoping to explore or uh, work that really speaks to them. For me, this is the next generation of arts artists and arts enthusiasts and arts supporters. So for them to be able to come in and share what they've done, what they're excited about, is just a tremendous introduction into the world of art. And you know, I think we're really lucky to be able to do this for our kids in our community. I think it, it gives us a moment to stop our busy lives and, and really come in and celebrate um, what kids do best and that's just they work in an, an explosion of color and form and it, it's just really nice to be able to to celebrate what they do well i think art has many benefits um, you know for them cognitively developmentally and it's a way to to really communicate and bond with other people without sometimes when we're younger we don't have the right words to convey our feelings and through art, they can often do that. So I, I think it's, it's tremendously helpful for, for kids of all ages. Uh, I'm Judd Clay, and this one's my art piece. And it's about a bird, and we, we researched about this, this um, artist that does dots when he paints. And so my teacher made us do dots on when we on when we painted. And so I used a marker when I did mine and I just did multiple colors on my wings. Okay, my name's Alexia Mullen and this is my Mona Lisa I drew in um, Pod B, Force View. Um, we just made it for artwork and she chose mine because it was unique and it looked like water going down the side of the Mona Lisa right down there. It's like a warm or cool. I chose to do cool because it's like a little bit of dark colors and then I did the um, light colors for the Mona Lisa hair. I've been interested in art for a while. while. The first time I did it was when I just started just drawing randomly on a piece of paper and then I just seen like a cool design, so I just started doing that, and that's what sparked my interest. I'll keep doing art after this, because it's really fun to do. It seems to me, I'm a retired art teacher, so I know that in the past I've taught art for, for many years, and I know students come back to me and say one little lesson, you know, impressed them, and it made them go on and want to do more artwork as either a career or hobbies. It's, a, it's just giving them the, um, materials, good materials and inspiration to pursue their art, whether or not it's for a career. 
Well, I think of the students when they come into a gallery setting like this, it's, it's, their self-esteem has to be increased because they see their work of art among all the other works that are exceptional with talent and skill. So I think, and they bring their families, it's very rewarding to see them come in and bring their families, they're dressed up and proud of their work. And we have them all displayed in different, different places, so they, they have to walk around and look for their artwork, so that makes them enjoy everyone else's work as well. I hope that all of the children who come here who are exhibiting, or even those that just come to see the exhibit, really start to feel that art has a place and that it is important and it isn't just something you do on the side for fun, that it really can be a part of your daily life. Uh, that's how we feel about art and, and it would be gratifying for us to feel that we're instilling that into the next generation. I think live music is important because I've noticed, especially for doing shows for kids, there's just nothing more inspiring for them to see someone holding a guitar or a violin or a cello and giving their gift of music to them. And I think just that seeing it, it's different from a video, it's different from listening to a song on the radio. It makes a real impact. My name is Amanda Grace. I'm a singer-songwriter and I'm here at the Boys and Girls Club of Bemidji just going to put on a short concert for the families and their kiddos. My family is here. We just spent uh, the 4th of July in the Brainerd area and just thought it'd be a great opportunity to uh, make some more friends, I guess. Hi guys! Hi! How are you? I'm Amanda Grace. Aren't we lucky to be outside today? That is so awesome. Super nice day. I'm gonna sing you a new song. It's called Music Makes It Right. Hey you guys, before we get started, let's always show our manners and our appreciation by giving a huge shout out. Let's go whoop, 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 whoop to Nate, our sound guy. Ready? Whoop, 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 whoop. Are you guys ready? All right, let's have some fun. You can jump to your feet on this one if you like to dance. I started tinkering around on the piano as young as four or five, and I started probably noodling out some of my first little songs. And that's my primary instrument. I love the piano. Even now I see one and I just get all excited. And in college I just picked up the acoustic guitar. When the rain's pouring down, when the rain's pouring down, and I need to lift up my soul, I'll grab my guitar and sing myself a If I'm writing songs to make kids happy, then I, I want to perform for them. I think about being a kid, I think about my own kids. For children and for the love song stuff, I just think about my experience. I'm happily and luckily married to a wonderful guy and he's my rock and so a lot of the songs that I've written are just sort of based off of my own reality and reflections, I guess. La, 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 la. When I'm writing a song, usually what happens is the music comes to me first, but that's not always the case. I've had the pleasure of teaching some young writers conferences and I talk a lot about writing titles and how when you're sort of in a dry spell, writing a creative title can get you started on whatever you're working on. Sometimes I'll just get a title idea and then kind of sit down and when I have some time carve out some space to use that title as the theme of the chorus and then writing verses that and a bridge that connect to that idea. To start my day right, I play my favorite station till I feel like How many of you are kind of crazy like me and like unicorns? Okay, perfect. I am at the right place. Right there, that little girl right there, help me write this song. Part. Uh -huh, unicorn. People 
keep trying to give me this advice that I need to just pick a genre, but I keep remembering my childhood dream, which was a funny one. I had a radio station that was an imaginary one called Any Kind of Music, and I made up my own um, jingles, songs, and even wrote news stories, because I that's just what I did. And so I, when I came back and started the children's CD, I just thought, you know, I guess I'll do kid stuff. And then I didn't think that I would do anything else. And then all of a sudden, my sister went through this, this other, this whole other part of a darkness in her life. And so then I was just feeling like I was writing all this other stuff. So it, it had to be, I felt like it had to come out whether it made sense to others or not. Say we'll see the world and we'll see the world on your back. Say on your I hope when I tour to just do to do both the children's show and stuff for the adults too. And I'm actually working on some new surprises for a totally different genre next. So <laughs> Unicorn, I'm happy to see you go. Just so you know. Say Say do 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 La di da do do Say la di da do 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 do. Say la di di da. I'll be walking down the street with the sun beaming down on me. If I get tired, I'll lay down and sleep on a some summer day. On a some summer day. If it's hot, I'll stay in the shade. I could make my own lemonade. I could sell some and give the rest away. On a some summer day. I like that. On a some summer day. Say well, I think we're pretty lucky now with cell phones that have video and re recording abilities. I try to keep my cell phone with, and I am doing more where I'll have my guitar and just record and sing right into it so I don't forget it. But I do always write stuff down, just scratch it down on paper too, just so I don't forget. And carving out time to songwrite as a mom and other responsibilities has been important, but I try not to put too much pressure on myself because it, life is busy and family comes first. And so usually if I'm paying attention, I'll find a little window of time to kind of get my thoughts out on paper. great as long as I'm with you better than a thousand shades of blue say on a some summer day again on a some summer day say everything we know everything's okay everything everything's okay good singing we say everything's okay on a summer day hey well, as a kid, I was a big fan of Mariah Carey, and I would try to sing like her. Vocally, that's what she inspired me. Um, also, the Cranberries was one of my favorite groups. She writes a lot of songs about, or she did, about a war and what it, what it does to children and what, you know, what is our what our responsibility is. We just know more and more. We know what's going on. What what can we do, and how can music change that? Do, 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 say la di da do, 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 say la di da do, 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 say la di di da on a summer day. Thank you. You guys were awesome. I'm going to give you guys a round of applause. <laughs> I'm going to play a song that's a little bit sad, but it kind of, it ends up in a, you know, it's kind of like a movie. Sometimes they start a little bit sad, but then they get better, right? Well, that's some of the songs I wrote are sort of like 
a movie that ends well. And this song is was inspired by my nephew Bryce, who had leukemia. And I felt like this is his song that I had to write for him. It goes like this. Yes, I will look for today's rainbow. Although it's raining, it could still be peeking out behind the shadows of this half sunny, half cloudy day. I have started out my music journey by doing a children's CD called Trains, Cars, and a Trip to Mars in memory of my nephew Bryce, who had passed away of leukemia and was sort of an inspiration to me. I hadn't taken my career very seriously and just sort of enjoyed it, but then became a stay-at-home mom and just sort of life, life takes you uh, through an interesting path. And then I was inspired also just kind of by being writing kids songs and writing lullabies for my kids that some of their stories are also on that CD. I didn't know if I would continue recording, but I started to perform for kids a little bit in 2010 when it was done. And then I started writing a lot of love songs and the same sister who lost her son to leukemia then lost her husband to a sudden brain aneurysm. So there's some songs on that CD which is called Embrace, which is sort of like acoustic rock. And those songs are inspirational love songs and um, some of a couple of favorite cover songs. For today's rainbow, though it's raining, it could still be peeking out behind the shadow of this half sunny, half cloudy day. So I just have been kind of performing for for kids and also this love song stuff and then I just started a women's band about two years ago called Wildflower and we do contemporary folk so really just a mix of things and it's keeping me on my toes. Say I will look for today's rainbow although it's raining it could still be peeking out behind the shadow of this half sunny half cloudy day and although i know you'll say that things will get me down but i choose to view Got the drum, is it sitting there? So this is that one that goes, I will sing, sing a new song today. Okay, so one, two, ready, play. Okay, sing with me. Say I will sing, sing a new song today. Can you say that? have decided the last year or two as the kids are getting a little older and are wanting to be more involved with the shows. They are coming along with me to, I'd say half of them if, it's, if it works for everybody. I'm trying not to burn them out too much. I've tried to not be too pushy about it, but now our son is starting to play drums a little bit. He played at Rochester Fest and that was so fun and, and a great experience as a mom. And now he wants to be my merch guy and he's sitting there covering the table. So he feels, he feels like he's carrying a responsibility too. So it's a real pleasure. It was harder when they were little and when you have toddlers, they're just everywhere and trying to keep them out of the cord bags and from yanking a mic stand over, it's not easy. Dance, dance a new dance. For my tours the last year, I've decided to 
kind of do a new direction. My kids are getting older and more active in sports and every parent knows that stage of the game. And so what I'm doing is we are kind of saying, hey, we want to visit Mount Rushmore. So for instance, in a couple of weeks, we're going to go see the sites and I'll be doing a couple of shows on the way. And then other than that, I'll stay locally, regionally. And when I do like a conference, for instance, I'll just try to get a couple of shows while I'm in the area, kind of to make the most of it. And so to kind of balance that being gone too much thing at night. Say I will paint a new picture. For independent musicians, we need other people's help. It's just like any other business. It's really word of mouth and people sharing your stuff on Facebook, following you, Instagram, just connecting and really finding your way forward through others is really what it's about. And I find that every year that goes by, I find more and more support from my family, friends, fans, and I am very overwhelmed by all that, that love, so. Thanks so much for watching. Join us again next time on Common Ground. If you have an idea for a common ground piece that pertains to North Central Minnesota, email us at legacy at lptv.org or call us at 218-333-3014. To view any episode of Common Ground online, visit us at lptv.org. episodes or segments of Common Ground, call 218-333-3020. Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people November 4th, 2008. If you enjoyed this episode of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org.